just hours to go for the coronation of King Charles. He waited 70 years for the throne. I'm sure he can wait another 24 hours. Can't say the same about his realm, though. Charles is not just king of the United Kingdom. He's the head of state in 14 other countries. Let me pull up that map for you. Charles is king in Canada and Australia, in New Zealand and the Bahamas, also in Solomon Islands and Papua New Guinea. These people did not pick the monarchy. It was forced upon them by British colonialism. We're talking about a different time here. Many young countries were confused about their future after independence, so sticking with the Queen may have seemed logical then. But now things have changed. The so-called realms are not My young realms countries anymore. They are mature democracies. Some of them are rethinking their ties with the crown. They're wondering why they're getting a new king. Indigenous leaders from 12 Commonwealth countries have written to, to King Charles. They want him to do three things. Apologize for colonialism, pay reparations using crown wealth, and return looted artifacts. I don't have a crystal ball, but I can say this for sure. Charles will do none of it. He has talked about acknowledging the mistakes of colonialism, but acknowledgement is one thing, apology is quite another. I know a sorry sounds like too little too late, but sometimes it can go a long way. Just ask UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. Last week, he was asked to apologize for British colonialism and the slave trade. He refused. Sunak says focus on the present, not the past. And that comment has been slammed by the Prime Minister of Belize. It's one of the 15 countries where Charles is king. The Prime Minister of Belize says Sunak should have apologized. He also says Belize will, quote-unquote, quite likely remove the monarchy. So 14 realms could soon become 13. 14 apart from the UK. Perhaps even less. Another country, Jamaica, is thinking along the same lines. There are reports of a referendum next year. If the public agrees, Charles will lose Jamaica as well. So it's a gradual process. Queen Elizabeth II lost 17 countries in her reign, like Sri Lanka, Barbados, Kenya and Pakistan. Her son is on course to losing at least two. Where does that leave the monarchy? In a precarious situation. But do you know what the irony is? It's the small developing countries that are ditching the crown. The so-called progressive Western countries are not. One reason for that is the process. It's extremely hard to abolish the monarchy. There are a lot of proposals, a lot of votes, a lot of campaigning. Take Canada, for example. If they want to abolish the monarchy, they need unanimous support from the House of Commons, from the Senate, and from all 10 provinces, which is why many experts feel nobody's interested. Same thing with Australia. They have a Republican Prime Minister in Anthony Albanese, but he too will swear loyalty to the King. I haven't changed my position on that, and uh, I've made that very clear. Uh, I want to see an Australian as Australia's head of state. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can not have uh, respect for the institution, uh, which is the system of government that we have. You cannot respect and abolish something. The fact is, not every former colony has the same relationship with the Crown. The likes of Australia and Canada may not mind the King, but the likes of Jamaica, Barbados and Belize do. These are countries that really paid the price for colonialism, with slavery, with engineered famines and with constant looting. For them, the Crown is a painful symbol. So why not dash for the door? If they're scared of risking ties with the UK, just look at India. India is a former colony, but also a republic. Saying no to the crown did not hurt India's ties with the UK. Having said that, some residual doubts remain, like the Commonwealth of Nations. A group of 56 countries, including India, all of them are former colonies of Britain. By default, it is headed by the king or queen. And reports say the new king has a keen interest in India. He's visited 10 times already. His friends say he wants to visit again at the, at the earliest opportunity. To do what exactly? Apparently, Charles loves Indian culture and practices like yoga. We say his interest is certainly welcome, but his royal legacy, not so much. India has long debated the relevance of the Commonwealth. It is not strategic, it is not economically helpful, and it has a burden, the burden of a traumatic past. So why bother holding on to it? Leaving the Commonwealth may not have material gains, but it will bring closure. 
As for the political fallout, New Delhi should not be worried. The Commonwealth is a relic of the empire, not the UK. The same UK that did not think twice before storming out of the European Union. If that was nationalism, then so is this.